Only I can live forever. This is why Joe Rowling and Steve Clovis are so clever, is that just because the battle starts, it doesn't mean the rest of the film stops. Because all the other characters and all the other relationships and all the other stories carry on in the battle. That's what's great. That's why you don't just feel it's just a battle sequence, because all those other things that you know from Harry Potter, like the humour and the, the, the romance and all that stuff, is all feeding into it. I mean, you know, not Harry's not experiencing too much humour or too much romance, but the, although he does get a, a mid-battle kiss, which I instigated, I have to say, the other day. Um, I, I said, we should, we should, we'd probably kiss at this moment, wouldn't we? It might be one of those sort of like, I could be dead any minute now, Ginny. We should probably kiss. Um, so there's one of those moments. But it's like all those all those stories carry on within the battle. I mean, it's going to be huge. He starts off the most composed and the most in control we've ever seen him in the first part of the, the seventh. And then by the end of the second part, he's almost totally lost his mind. So it's a really interesting journey for his character because he's going from somebody who is kind of very stable and kind of in control and and evil and, and malevolent but nonetheless steady and as Harry starts destroying parts of his soul he starts slowly kind of losing his mind as well they all know that they the reason they're here and the reason they're on this journey is much bigger than any one of them or even all three of them or even all of their friends and their families it's it is bigger than all of that and for three 17 year olds to sort of have that maturity and realize that that's what, what's at stake is much more important than any of their individual lives um is uh yeah is is quite impressive and is what makes it a very moving story <laughs> Can live forever.